Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. You can open up with me to Isaiah chapter 1. And my sermon this morning, I don't usually remember what I say for a sermon, what I did this morning. Talk to me. Talk to me. All right. Isaiah chapter 1. Um, come now, verse 18. Come now and let us reason together. He wants to hear your thoughts. He wants to know your intelligence. He wants to know what's on your mind. He wants to know what's in your heart. If you don't talk to him, he won't talk to you. It's just the way to go. I guess when you walk in the Spirit, sometimes you get like that. When you're around people, you don't talk to them till they talk to you. Because my talking is done in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit, praying with my natural language. I get exhausted praying and exhausted writing. But it says, come, let us reason together. That's you and God. Saith the Lord, through your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they will be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, hold on to this verse, it'll make sense in a minute, you shall eat the good of the land. We want God to bless us, but we don't want to do what He has us to tell us to do. And go with me to Isaiah 43. I give you two witnesses to this truth, so you know that it's the Spirit of God. In Isaiah 43 and 29, I'll start with 25, excuse me. I, even I, am He that blots out thy transgression. That's the same thing in over Hebrews 8 and 10. You've got to understand, when you ask God to forgive you of something, he remembers it no more. He'll never bring that back up to your attention. I like that. I have not met anybody in this natural realm that you have hurt somebody, offended somebody, or did something that was crazy, and they always remind you about it. But when you come to God and say, God, according to 1 John 1, 9, because you're born again, I confess my sins. You're faithful and just to forgive me my sins and to cleanse me from righteous. At that moment, he in the realm of the Spirit remembers it no more. It's washed under the blood. He says, I blot out, why do I blot out those sins and remember them no more? As goes, blot thy tramp for my sake, and I will never remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance. Tell me what my word says. Tell me what I have obligated myself to. Tell me what I have promised you. Put it in my face. <laughs> Talk to me. Not in an arrogant attitude. Not rude. Not coming and being desperate. But talk to me. Talk to me like you would talk to your father. Talk to me like you would talk to your grandparents. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that they might be justified. Now turn with me to Second Chronicles. Chapter 20. I want to bring out some things here that you might be interested in. I'll try to go short since we have a busy day. Or aren't. <laughs> and it came to pass, verse 1, also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon. If you don't know who they are, that's the two daughters of Lot that make incense sex with him. And they both got pregnant and they both became nations. When they escaped Sodom and Gomorrah. So really, when you think God destroyed this nation or nations because of the perversion, because when the angels came in, they came to the house and said, we want them to come out so we can have sex with them. <laughs> so, and the man, Lot said, don't do that. Please don't do that. And you know the story. They escaped, but they end up doing the same thing the city, was, the city did. So sometimes you wonder about things, you know. I and mean, if you don't know the story, they got their dad drunk. And he got so drunk, he didn't know what he's doing. And so the first daughter had sex with him, got pregnant. And the first born said to the second born, now it's your turn. They got him drunk again. Second one had sex with him, and she got pregnant. And that's these two nations. 
Then it goes on and it says to him, others beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, whatever, to battle. Then came some and told Jehoshaphat, saying, There comes a great multitude against these from beyond the sea of Syria. Hold they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is in Jedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and to proclaim a fast throughout Judea. So here he is. He gets really bad news. They're a small nation, and these three huge nations are coming against him. He doesn't have the power. He doesn't have the weaponry. You have in life, you have a mountain that hits your life. You don't know what to do. We talked about a little bit about this last week. You come to a place at your wit end. You don't, you don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. And so what do you turn to? Alcohol? Do you turn to narcotics? Do you turn to antidepressants? Do you turn to the psychiatrist? Do you turn to the medical doctors? Do you turn to the counselors, advisors, a friend, a family, a church, a pastor? What do you do when something hits your life that you absolutely do not know what to do? The situation is greater than you can provide strength, finances, anything. You're in a situation that's bad. And Jehoshaphat said he feared what the situation was. That fear can grip your heart. Worry and anxiety can grab your heart and you sit there and you spin, you don't sleep, you don't eat, you get sick in the stomach, you go, what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? Nobody cares, God doesn't care, nobody cares about me! <laughs> so you're in that situation. So what's this man do? He turns to God. He said, come and reason with me. Come plead with me, talk to me. Tell me what you're thinking, tell me what you're fearing, tell me what you're struggling with, tell me what you're going through. I'm here, my ears are open. You're my son, you're my daughter. I've, I've called you, chosen, ordained me. Talk to me. I can't help you if you don't talk to me. Jesus said over there in Matthew, God already knows your need, but you have to ask. He won't fulfill your need unless you ask Him. Because He wants you to know that He's the Father and that He supplied Him. Because when you begin to ask Him according to His Word, and your, His Word remains in you, John 15, 7, Whatever you ask, then it will be given unto you. And so he goes, he feared he's the king. Revelations 1, 6, you're the king and a priest. Revelations 5, 10, you're a king and a priest. Revelations 26, you're a king and a priest. So you're a king in the realm of the spirit. You're to rule your life. You're to dominate your life. You're to control the situations of your life. You have the dominion in the name of Jesus. We sung about it this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What is in that name? In that name was death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He conquered not only the body of sin and the body of spiritual death and physical death, but he also kicked the teeth out of Satan. He brought him to knock. He says in Genesis 3.15, he bruised his head. He destroyed his rulership. He destroyed his power. He destroyed his seat. But you say, well, why is he still there? Because we, through Adam, gave Satan our dominion. Until we're gone off the earth, he has a right to sit on that seat. But just because he's sitting there, you've got to understand through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, he's been stripped of all of his power, He's been stripped of all his position. He's been stripped of everything he can do. If you understand the word of God and pray it out in the name of Jesus. And so here he is. He gathers themselves together to ask help of the Lord. And I want you to hear how he does this. You come and you plead to the Lord. And came together and he asked to help out of all the cities of Judea. They came to seek the Lord. You're going to hit issues in life that you can't handle them. You're going to hit places in life that you don't know what to do. We were ministers and the churches would kick us out. I got thrown out of a nation. With nowhere to go. I've been kicked out of homes. Nowhere to go. And so I know this works. You lay your care to the Lord and you talk to Him 
and say, God, I am in a situation. I do not know what to do. I don't know how to turn. I don't know where to begin. I am stuck. I am in a place that I do not know what to do. It's a humbling situation. So anyway, Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of G in Jerusalem. He humbles himself. You go back and read some of the kings of Israel. Not one was a godly king. Not one believed in God. Not one cared about God. And you should see who they turned to. But this man humbles himself. First Peter says, if you humble yourself and submit yourself unto my hand of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, he will exalt you in the time of need. He will exalt you. So here he is. He humbles himself in front of his people. And now the first thing he says, O oh God, O oh Lord God, verse 6 of Second Chronicles 20, Thou art God in heaven. He starts to brag on God. What do you do when you come to God? Oh, God, I have this need. Oh, God, I have this. This is my situation. We always put us first. Selfish. But God teaches in the Word of God, and we come and brag on Him, get His attention, praise Him, worship Him. He doesn't need it. But what praise and worship does, it takes you out of the natural. It takes you out of your circumstance. It gets your eyes off of what, what am I going to do, what am I going to do, what am I going to do? Because if you learn to worship God out of your spirit, not, not to soul and, and sing songs, what a friend I have in Jesus. Blessed is the rock or whatever. <laughs> I don't mind music, mind it. We're looking for a music worshiper. But anyway, to lead worship. But anyway, here I am and uh, I'm, si- I'm sitting there, you know, and I don't know what to do. Here's this man, he's sitting there, he starts to, Talk to God. He starts to get God's attention. Listen to how God put it in the Word of God. Look, look how the Holy Spirit put it in. And so he goes and he says, O Lord God of fathers, art thou not God in heaven? And rulest not over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? He's bragging on how big his God is. He's bragging on He is the God of all gods. He's the, he's the creator. He's the master of the heaven and earth. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Are not thou God who did drive out the inhabitants? Now he starts to tell him why he's in the situation he's in. See, I didn't call myself. And I'm not going to go through it because some of you are getting bored with it. But I fought God from 17 to 35, and it wasn't a pretty situation. <laughs> My body's paying the prices today. And I fought God, and I said, <laughs> Here's Josephat. He's the king of Judah because of his, his bloodline, David, through Abraham. God called Abraham to come out of the nations. Moses delivered them out of Egypt, brought him into the promised land. And so here he is. He's reminding God of that. He's reminding God of the covenant that was made with these people. If you don't understand that, when Jesus died and shed his blood, he was the intermediate between God and man. He's the bloodhead. In other words, he cut his blood for you, and he cut his blood for God to bring us back together in a oneness. You remind God of the covenant. His will is his word. The covenant is in his will. The will is the word that's in Hebrews. Who died to make that will good? Jesus. He shed his blood. He died. And the new will, the New Testament came into effect through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But here's an Old Testament man. He stands up and he says, God, you did drive out the inhabitants of land before the people of Israel and you gave it to the seed of Abraham. I'm a seed of Abraham. The friend forever. That's covenant terms. You made a covenant with Abraham. And I came out of his seed. And because you made that eternal covenant through the blood, I am a part of that covenant. And he's reminding God of that covenant. Remind God of his word. Remind God of his promises. What you're standing on. What you're feeding on. Talk to him. Reason with him. He's not a mind reader. He already knows. But he wants you to talk to him. Sometimes we knew what our kids needed, but we wanted them to ask us. 
because we bought them something they didn't want, who knows what they did with it. And then it goes on and says this, Art, Art not the God to drive out the inhabitants? Verse 8, they dwelled therein and had built their sanctuary therein for thy name saying. Now, here's what he just said to him. In 1 Kings chapter 8, it's such a beautiful, uh, it's such an incredible uh, book, uh, if I can find it. I won't go through it all, but what it is, here's the background of it. God told David, well, David really had a desire from God to build a temple, to build a church. And so he would raid a, 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 a kingdom, and he would take their jewels, their gold, their silver, their wood, their cattle, uh, the virgins, and so forth and so on. And he became a very powerful nation. But his deepest desire for God was to build him a habitation on the earth. And so God came to him and said, buddy, you're too bloody. You've murdered so many men. You, you've spilled so much blood upon the earth. I don't want to build my house through blood. I want to build my house through peace. Solomon was, if you understand the story, David cheated on his wife. Uh, excuse me. David should have went to war. There was time in those generations when the spring hit, they were to go to war. It was all about conquering land. It was all about being the big guy. It was all about how powerful you are. And so they would take nation after nation after nation. So David stays home. And out of his window was a beautiful woman taking a bath naked. And he would watch her day after day after day. And you know, man, what that does. And so he sends for her. And the husband of this woman was one of his 33 great men that talks about in the Bible, one of the 33 greats. He accomplished something mighty. He takes his wife and brings her over and has sex with her. She gets pregnant. Prophet comes in and says, what did you do, boy? And so at the time, he brings the husband home and says, here, have some meat. Got him drunk, go home and spend time with your wife, hoping he would blame her, him, for the sex instead of him. And he said, I can't do that. You're my king. My friends and my warriors are fighting. I, I can't go home and, and enjoy my wife while they're out fighting and giving their life for you. I am one of them. I'm going back. So he tries another thing. And it doesn't work. So he writes to Joab and says, Joab, put him on the front line in the hottest, heaviest battle. Put him on the front line. Make him the leader. Put him out there. And Joab writes back, your heart desire has been fulfilled. He was killed in battle today. So he takes the man's wife and makes him his wife. But the baby dies. God took him. For the sin that he did he paid the piper for what he did god loved him he called him the man after his own heart so he she gets pregnant again and god promised through this child he would rule the nation his name was solomon so solomon has a vision god appears to him and asked him what would you like solomon most of us human people would say money gold women power, big kingdom, you know, I want, to, I want to be great, man. He said, give me the wisdom. These people are so mighty. Give me the wisdom on how to rule these people. And God was so impressed with that. He was so impressed with that. So David, instead of who couldn't build a, a temple for God, he, he brings in a, he built a tent over the ark. Over on this mountain, they're still doing the sacrifices through the blood. They're giving auction. They're giving they're giving pigeons, they're giving sheep, they're giving goats, and the smoke's going up. And over on this mountain, the Zion, they're over here and they're worshiping God. They're praising 24-7. They have guitars and drums and cymbals. You think these churches today are something. They had ten-stringed instruments and, and, and flutes and horns and all kinds of things and worshiping. And they had robes and they were singing before God. And before the Ark of the Temple, which represented the supernatural power of God. And God said, I left over there. <laughs> I'm over here. I'm over here in worship and praise. And so Solomon 
promised his dad. He builds him a house and establishes. And that's in 1 King 8. And the glory came down in that, into that place so strong, the priests couldn't get up to minister. The power of God was in that place so strong. We haven't seen anything in a lot of modern churches what they saw in the times of the Old Testament. That's embarrassing. We're in a better covenant, a better thing. In verse 8 there, if you want to hear that, it came to pass in verse 10, when the priests were come out of the holy place, the glory cloud, the cloud filled the house of the Lord. So the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord has filled the house of the Lord. Solomon begins to consecrate the church that he built unto God. And I'm running out of time, so in verse 37, he said, When heaven is shut up and there's no rain, that's the 35, because we have sinned against thee, we pray towards this place and confess thy name. We turn from our sin which thou afflictest them. You will hear in heaven and forgive the sin of the servants of thy people Israel and teach them the good way wherein they should walk and give rain upon the land which thou given to the people of Haran. Pull the rain back a little bit, Lord. <laughs> if there be no land, if there be in the land famine or pestilence, the COVID-19, that's what that means, blasting mildew, locusts, if there are caterpillar, if their enemies besiege them in the land of their cities, whatever plague, whatever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication be made by any man, by all the people of Israel which shall know every man their plague of their own heart and spread forth their hands towards this house, thou will hear in heaven in the dwelling place, forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest, for thou even only knowest the hearts of all the children, they that fear thee all the days of thy life in the land which thou gavest unto the Father. So Hezekiah, I mean, Joseph, Joseph, <laughs> is reminding God of this covenant and this prayer. So he's pleading with God, what? Number one, telling how God, how big God is. Two, he's telling him why he's the king. It wasn't his fault. It's through the seed he was born through. And now he's ruling on the throne. He's the son of David, through the seed of the son of David. And now, God, you made a prayer over this tabernacle that is an eternal covenant that if we cry out to you, you will hear our voice. The Lord just said something to my spirit. He goes through this Solomon in 1 Kings 9. And why do I should plead with the Lord? Why should I come in and, 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 and talk to him about who he is, how great he is, his word, his promises, remind him of his word, plead with him, tell him my situation, lay down, I can't take it anymore. With this woman, you give me, no, I'm just kidding. Whatever my situation might be. And so in... Kings 9, listen to this. And came to pass when Solomon finished the building of the house and all Solomon's desire which he pleased to do, the Lord appeared Solomon the second time. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and I have heard thy supplication. Come and reason with me. Talk to me. That thou hast made before me and I will hollow this house which thou hast built to put my name forever in my eyes and my heart shall be perpetually. In other words, I will always honor this prayer because of your dedication of your heart towards the love of me. So here's Jehoshaphat in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 20. Three nations, his brothers, Jacob's brother Esau, that's one of the nations coming against him. And his cousin Lot, remember Abraham took Lot, his two children, now they're nations. It's a family situation here. <laughs> so they're coming against Israel, Jacob. And he reminds God of that. If evil, verse 9, comes upon us and the sword of judgment, pestilence, famine, we stand before the house. That's what Solomon prayed. In thy presence, for the name is in this house. That's what Solomon prayed. Cry unto it with our affliction. That's what Solomon said then thou will hear and help. He turned to God in his situation. Again, do you turn to alcohol? Do you turn to drugs, antidepressants, doctors, psychiatrists, counselors, advisors, family, pastors? Who do you turn to? 
God's saying, turn to me. Reason with me. Talk to me. I'm your father. You're my child. I made a covenant with you through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Every promise in the New Testament is yours. I made a covenant with you. I called you. I chose you. I ordained you. Talk to me. And then it goes on. Now behold the children of Ammon, Moab, and Sire, that's Esau, whom thou would not let Israel invade. Now listen, he's telling them, we came in and you wouldn't let us conquer them. You said they were family. So we let their land go. We just went on the main road. We didn't take their food. We didn't take their drink. We didn't take their virgins. We didn't take their cattle. We didn't take their silver. We didn't, we didn't touch them like he told us to do. We destroyed them not. Behold, I say how they reward us and they come to cast us out of our possession, which you have given us. The covenant you made with me. You called me. You chose me. You ordained me. I didn't want to do this. You told me to do this. Oh, our God, will not thou judge them, for we have no might. I'm not equipped to handle this situation, Lord. I don't have the finances. I don't have the means. I don't have anybody in high power. I don't know anybody that's great. I have no strength. All I have is you. Against this company, come against us. Neither know how what we to do, but ours are upon thee. Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, their children, and there was a prophet in their midst, the son of Aspha. You see that? In verse 14, that's the people that worshipped on Mount Zion. And Solomon set them up through their generation, their blood, to continue to worship God before the Ark of the Covenant. And through worship and prayer came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst. See, if they would have never pleaded, if he would have never talked to God, if he would have never pleaded with him and reasoned with God, God would have never spoke. God knows your situation. He knows how you're hurting. He knows where you're at. He knows your situation. But my God, why won't you talk to him? My God, why won't you come to him? Don't you believe that he is? It says over in Hebrews 6, without faith it is impossible to please him. Please him. But he will reward those that diligently seek him. Seek him. Talk to him. Plead with the covenant of God. You think these are words just to put in a book to cover a book to book called Bible? It's God's intelligence. It's God's facts. It's what God can do. It's who God is. And he wants you to know him, to come to him and talk to him. And so then he cast the spirit of the Lord says, Hearken unto me, all Judea. This is what God said to them through the Spirit. You inhabitants of Jerusalem, thou king of Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, that's a command, nor dismayed. Don't lose your heart by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours. You have now asked me to get involved, and I'm going to take care of the situation. Amen? Cast your care upon me, and I will take care of you. That's good, good stuff, man. And then he goes tomorrow to go down against them. Here's a word of knowledge that comes. Manifestation of the Spirit. We get over into the Spirit and we worship God out of our spirit. Not singing who, my fr I can't even get these names right. What a friend I have in Jesus. Rock of all ages. Brenda should get up here. She knows them all. But he wants to hear what's in your heart. He wants to know how, how you worship. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to hear your faith. When, when we get over into the Spirit, manifestations of the Spirit begin to move. The first one that moves is the word of knowledge here. This is what the word of knowledge says. Tomorrow go against them. They will be coming up by the cliff of Ziz. You shall find them at the end of the book before the wilderness of Jerusalem. Man, they knew where the enemy was coming. Man, you're ready for the enemy. You'll kick his butt. Because you know, they're not ready for it. 
You shall need not to fight in this battle. You not, will not swing one sword. You will not f- swing one sword, one spear. The battle is mine. This is crazy. Stand you still. Once you plead with him, once you talk to him, once you hear his voice, he will speak to you like he did to Solomon, like he did to Jehoshaphat. I can't get to the other ones today. I'm almost out of time already. i got a few more minutes. When you get over to the Spirit and you plead with God, He will respond to you. He says, O Judah, Jerusalem, fear not, be dismayed, for tomorrow go up against them. For the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head and his face to the ground. Let's jump ahead a little more. Verse 19, Levite. They stood to praise the Lord God with a loud voice. Listen to this. They began to turn. What do you do when you believe you receive? You receive it in the spirit realm, but you don't have it yet in the natural realm. And the devil has a right to come in and kick your butt. He has a right to test your faith. He has the right to see if you're genuine or not. He's going to find out if you really believe what you believe. The circumstance might turn worse. Something else might show up. I mean, all hell breaks loose. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? The Bible says to strengthen your faith. To empower your faith between receiving into the realm of the Spirit and receiving into the natural. There's a distance of time. There's no time in the realm of the Spirit. What do I do in the natural realm when there's time before receiving in the realm of the Spirit and coming over to the natural? You worship God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that I'm healed. Thank you you meet my needs. Thank you that I have peace. When do I say that? When all hell is breaking out when the sickness is running rapid, when you open the cabinets and there's no food. Thank you, Jesus, you supply my need. Thank you, Jesus, I'm healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. And they rose early in the morning and they went forth into the wilderness. Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe you established. Do you really believe that the Spirit of God spoke to us through the prophet? If we believe, it will be established. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers. Listen to this. They're going out to three great nations that are warriors, much larger than them. And he says, Sing unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army and say, Praise the Lord for the mercy endureth forever. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth. For the Lord is good. So here's the worshipers that are not warriors. They're just worshipers. Levites that has no inheritance. They don't have anything. He tells them to get in front and start playing your instruments, start singing and worshiping God. And here they come. Here they come worshiping God. I can imagine what those men thought seeing that. And when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which they were come against Judah, they were smitten. For the children of Ammon stood against Moab. Moab started to fight in Seir, and they started to utterly kill each other (laughs) and made an end to the inhabitants. Everyone helped to destroy another. They turned on each other. The prophet said, you won't have to fight one moment. Since you came and you pled with me, since you reasoned with me, and you waited personally for me to answer, I have answered. Now you're doing what I told you to do. Be willing and obedient. You'll eat the good of the land. So they pleaded. They reasoned with God. He spoke. They were willing to do what God said. And they were obedient to His voice. And here they come to the army singing and praising God. And they turn on each other and they kill. Now here's the rapper. I'm way over. Four minutes. When Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, that's where the guards would look out and see the army coming. They looked unto the multitude and behold, they were all dead. (laughs) This is awesome. You know that circumstance you think so big? 
that situation you don't know how to handle, you don't know what to do, you reason with God, He'll answer you in time of need, Hebrews 4, 16. And you know what? That situation will be absolutely destroyed before it comes to the end. Are you listening to me? You're listening. He has principles in his Bible. If you apply them, it will work. But if you go around complaining, griping, murmuring, oh, look what, oh, I don't know why God's put this on me. Oh, I don't know how I can earn this. Book. I don't know why they did this to me. God, why did you allow this to happen to me? There's a devil. He's the God of this world order. And if you break through this world order by reasoning with him, he inhabits the praises of his people. He will come from the throne of the third heaven and come break through the second heaven where Satan's seat is. He'll break into the first heaven where we're at and he'll battle for you. Now here's the kicker. There was bodies falling to the earth and none escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came, they took the spoil. Because, see, when you went to army back then, they didn't have trucks. They didn't have airplanes and helicopters. They didn't have vehicles that ran by electric or diesel or gas. <laughs> they had donkeys and horses. And so if they were going a distance, they would bring food they would bring jewels. They would bring gold and silver in case you had to buy any uh, substance on the way. They couldn't carry everything. So they would bring riches with them so they could buy things as they went on. So here they come in. They conquered this nation by worshiping God. First, they pleaded to him. Second, they worshiped him. And now they're coming. And all they get to do is take away the riches. Isn't that awesome? God blessed them on top of it. Why? Because number one, they pleaded. Reminded God of his covenant. Reminded him of his promise. Two, they waited to hear from the Spirit of the living God. They did what the Spirit of God told them. They were willing to do what God told them. They were obedient to what God told them. And on top of it, God prospered them. Isn't that wild? I think that's absolutely wild. Now listen to this in closing. Send that three times, brother. I know. When Jehoshaphat and his people came, verse 25 and took away the spoil they found among them in abundance. Both riches with the dead bodies, precious jewels they stripped off for themselves, more than they carried away, and it took them three days to gather the spoil. So all they did is got their donkey and packed up boxes and carried it home. That's pretty wild to me, I don't know. And so anyway, the fourth day they assembled themselves they bless the Lord, the name of the place. Anyway, here's the last point. They came to Jerusalem with saw trees and harps and trumpets. They're worshiping. Now they're worshiping because of the victory. The house of the Lord and the fear of God was on all of the kingdoms. All the other nations around them. They heard what the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. They, so remain in Jehoshaphat was quiet. For his God gave him peace and rest about him. Why? In closing. They came when he didn't know what else to do. He came to his God, bragged on him how big and great he is, bragged on him. He called me, he chose me, he ordained me. He chose that we didn't do what we could have done. He told us not to do it. He reminded them where he was at. And then they began to worship and began to praise God after the Spirit of the Lord spoke to them. Father, I thought, thank you. I thank you, Lord, if we begin to do it your way, we will not have worry. We won't have care. We won't have frustration. We won't have anger. We will not have doubt. We will not get frustrated. We won't say, God, why did you do this to me? We won't blame our brothers and sisters in Christ. We won't blame God for he called me and now look what he's done to me. All of that stuff he said I've washed under the blood and I remember it no more. So Father, I thank you that if anybody in this room has a situation they cannot handle, 
Life has come to them and hit them between their eyes. But I ask you, Father, they take these principles of the Word of God. I showed them in two places today, with Solomon and with Jehoshaphat, that they lifted up their voice and worshiped you. For the Lord is good and His mercy endures, and they reaped a harvest of prosperity when they thought their lives were going to be taken. God, you can turn any situation around and make it a blessing. For what the devil is trying to destroy you and to take you out of the kingdom of God, you've come with these principles. God can turn that around and you'll end up with a blessing instead of a curse. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.